Hey, it's Mike here, and today, the Liver King, a guy who not only eats raw liver, but professes liver eating as a solution to many of life's problems. Because liver is gonna change the trajectory of your life, and it's gonna improve your mood, your memory, it's gonna improve your drive. Eat liver, and your wife that left you will return. Eat liver, and you'll forget you were bullied on the playground. Eat liver and you'll enter a fugue state in which you imagine you're on a Viking warship covered in blood with bazookas strapped to each arm. It's historically accurate. His claims go beyond liver though, and here's just one of them. He was recently on Logan Paul's show and Logan Paul lost a small portion of his testicle in a stunt accident. Here he is. You want to regrow that half testicle, you need more but testicle. That sounds nuts. Pun completely intended. I mean, you want to grow a bigger brain? Be smarter? Eat brains. And we will touch on that whole you are what you eat sort of idea later on. And the liver king, also known as Brian, even covered the topic of vegans on the show. And in, in an act of sort of overweening masculinity, he said that if his son came out as vegan, he would essentially disown them. What happened if your son came up to you he's like, Dad, I got to tell you something? I'll find another son. <laughs> Want another son? Eat somebody else's son. That's how it works. Yeah, you could say that was just a joke, but it's clear that he's sort of marketing a caricature of masculinity to a unfortunately huge audience of dudes that feel powerless or insecure. But what I really want to do in this video is address some of the health claims he makes and talk about the potential risks of people following those claims, looking at the science, and on and on. And I do want to mention there are a few spots left in next summer's Yellowstone trip where we're going to do a bunch of fun hiking and all the food will be provided and we'll get to see some bison who, by the way, don't eat liver and are super strong and big. As you will see, that does not fit his narrative anyway. If you do want to come on this awesome trip, the link will be below. But for a little background, as he was described by GQ, he is a TikTok star and I have seen him on TikTok and obviously I was like, hey, no, this is not for me. And he has gotten a lot of media attention lately. He even got a jab from Joe Rogan himself. Have you seen that bloke that eats the, just the raw? Yeah, that's a gimmick, that guy. It just looks ridiculous. He's got a something. plate of hearts and he just looks weird. He's got an ass filled with steroids is what he's got. Liver King denied doing steroids. I don't really care about this, but many people have accused him and cited things like how his stomach looks. He could just cycle off it. We'll never know. Joe Rogan also branded his liver claims as a gimmick, which given all of the out there beliefs that Joe Rogan has, you know, when he's calling you out like that, you know you gotta be out there. But moving back to his appearance on Logan Paul's show, he has everybody try a bunch of raw animal flesh parts. Little bit of a trigger warning here, here he is. And we got liver, testicle, we got some kidney, we got some pancreas, we got some, this is heart. <laughs> And for the women that aren't here at all, coincidentally, we have some animal coochie as well as some udders to make boobs bigger. He responds to the notion that it's gross or doesn't taste good by saying that, you know, you have to do things that are hard in order to improve in your life. I'm not good at this stuff. Like, I, I'm gonna need to plug my nose, you know? Like, do you actually think this stuff tastes good? Or have you convinced yourself that it tastes good because it's your lifestyle? Best for us in life are the things that we have to actively suffer for. However, I want to contrast this to some of the foods that well, the Blue Zones, the oldest living populations on Earth live. I mean, the Okinawans were famous for their sweet potatoes, which are delicious. The Sardinians had wheat and beans, and you have Nicoya, Costa Rica, and their tortillas and beans as well. These are things that taste good. And considering that his whole angle is, as you'll see in a second, a big appeal to history or appeal to nature, you would think that these things would taste better, that we would have evolved to eat them and love them, but no, unlike carnivore animals, we don't have those protein receptors and fat receptors right there on our tongue. And that brings me to his whole spiel, which is follow his ancestral tenants, things he thinks we sort of did in the past. And there are nine of them, eight of which he says are vegan, and they are honestly pretty basic. Some of them are just like sleep and get sun. But he says the single most important one is eating that liver. Anyway, here he is talking about this ancestral logic and kind of this power narrative. This is what our early ancestors ate for millions of years. This is what enabled us to become the baddest mammalian predators that ever lived. Or the baddest predators that ever livered. <laughs> no. You too can be an apex predator that receives my liver supplements in a capsule directly delivered to you at your house. 
Unfortunately, according to this recent study that looked more in detail at how many animals were eaten through the time period from having like chimp sized brains to nearly human sized brains so really evolving into becoming human. Now with a proper analysis during that time period, it does not appear that we were eating an increasing amount of animals. That's just what they found. And also just even in terms of cooking, I don't know why he thinks you need to eat these things raw. I mean, we've been cooking for longer than we've been homo sapien. But again, it's called an appeal to nature fallacy because just because something happens in nature doesn't mean it's the right thing or the best thing. But now we just have to get to those health claims. We'll go into liver in depth, but he seems to be a proponent of the carnivore diet, talking about how somebody who is sort of like on his crew or was there had reversed their psoriasis by eating a carnivore diet. And as I've said before, any elimination diet could potentially remove the bad acting food that can be triggering these things. So you could go on like a poop only diet or whatever. However, if the diet is going to be raising your LDL massively, like a carnivore diet will do, then you're going to be leveraging your heart disease risk and heart disease is the number one killer. I don't do any blood testing. I don't know what my cholesterol is and I don't ask people to do it. I don't believe in that shit. Unless you think you might have a problem, whatever, fine, go do whatever blood testing you wanna do. It's, good. it's a great medical example. Unfortunately, as many as 50% of all cardiac deaths are in people with no prior history or symptoms of disease. But he is trying to give people the hope that they can reverse random diseases by following this type of lifestyle. But moving on to particular claims about organ meats, cause he's definitely making some pseudoscientific claims here. Here he is. There are a lot of peptides that have been identified in the respective organs that you know you can't get anywhere else. You know, you know, Liver, you have hepcidin, you have ergothionine. He says all these different organs have all these amazing peptides in them like hepcidin in liver. However, hepcidin is 25 amino acids long. Again, a peptide is just a chain of amino acids. And as I said before, from Colorado State, virtually never you're gonna have a chain of more than four amino acids absorbed in the small intestine at all in the digestive system. So whether it's hepcidin or an entire testicle, it's sort of a fallacy to think that whatever you're going to eat is gonna be directly entering your bloodstream to work in some manner, whether it's collagen, which is hundreds of amino acids long or these things. <laughs> now, one thing that I will give him is that, yeah, a liver has a dense concentration of certain nutrients. It's mentioned over and over again. However, these are nutrients that people are generally getting and what you will probably not hear him mention is the concern of getting too much of a particular nutrient here and that is preformed vitamin A. He only seems to talk about getting preformed vitamin A as a good thing only, but again, we can reach a toxicity or hypervitaminosis A and carnivorous animals can detoxify vitamin A well from their liver. We are not so good at it. So as Harvard mentions with a normal functioning liver, the tolerable upper daily limit is 3000 micrograms of preformed vitamin and A. Then we need to add like how much the liver king is actually claiming to eat and how this is sort of pushing this whole eat more and more liver idea from GQ. He says he eats a pound of raw liver each day. He says, yeah, it's too much for people who are just starting out, but they should be eating three ounces twice a week. Finally, he says he can handle it because he understands the science behind it. <laughs> I understand the science behind cyanide poisoning, therefore I can drink an unlimited amount and be fine. Well, vitamin A content can be even higher. Three ounces of cow liver has about 6,000 micrograms or twice the upper limit. And so his one pound a day would be over 30,000 micrograms. Is this just a random vegan throwing nonsense concerns out there? No, from published case studies like this one, long-term cow liver consumption has led to, again, hypervitaminosis A. And one of these patients developed liver cirrhosis or liver scarring slash permanent damage. More like liver ding. Oh, okay, you can unsubscribe and then resubscribe as a hate subscriber if you, if you need to. But they ate cow liver and ended up damaging their liver, which is just so ironic here. And also, if you're trying to stay under that tolerable upper daily limit of vitamin A, all of a sudden, the nutrition doesn't seem very compelling of liver. I think it's really dangerous to push this culture of working up to eating more and more of this liver again with that vitamin A. And then also cholesterol, that three ounce serving would have about 330 milligrams of cholesterol. So on top of eggs, we're adding another high source of cholesterol to the diet. Again, heart disease leading killer. Don't wanna do that. 
But an area with liver consumption that I was frankly surprised was this bad was how the liver bioaccumulates various toxins. Here's a paper on chicken parts and they report heavy metal levels above the FAO slash WHO limit with the highest concentration in, you guessed it, liver. Cows can also be found to accumulate the toxin PCBs in their livers from this 2021 study out of the island nation of Curacao. They were accumulating the PCBs in the fat, but as this chart shows in terms of the toxic equivalent units of liver on the vertical or Y axis and fat tissues on the horizontal or X axis, the liver generally has 10 times the corresponding concentration of toxins as fat tissue. And this gets extra ironic here because of this constant manliness, toughness message, gotta get rid of those soft men. Well, as the study says, the European Food Safety Authority has lowered the tolerable weekly intake down to two picograms of these toxic equivalent units per kilogram of body weight per week based on the sperm quality effects observed in humans. To nerd out for a split second here, somebody like me at 180 pounds or 60 kilograms would have a daily limit of about 17 picograms. But looking at the y-axis of that chart, again, it's per gram of fat, and that three ounce serving of liver has about four and a half grams of fat, so we can multiply those liver levels by four and a half. So even the lowest liver on that chart would be you know, too much for somebody who is 285-ish pounds in terms of potential sperm quality reduction. Great advice to be a man. Anyway, another toxin that I've covered before is perfluoral alkyl substances, PFASes, and according to the German health authorities, quote, the consumption of sheep or beef liver can contribute considerably to the total intake of PFAS. And as the Guardian mentioned in a February article this year, some Michigan beef was contaminated and this was from just manure being thrown on fields that was contaminated. This is a one-time thing, but highly doubtful. It happened in Maine as well. They just caught it, but they do mention that, yeah, these chemicals are linked to many diseases, including liver disease. Once again, very ironic. Certain PFASs are highly correlated with meat consumption. You know, this 2021 study found a strong association, quote, between levels of PFOS as well as PFNA and the consumption of meat and meat products. Now that you know this, like why would you eat vegetables? PFOS is of course linked to diseases as well. And that study found that the meat eaters had about one and a half times the PFOS blood level that vegans did. And from this chart, I haven't mentioned this before, but the longer term vegans had generally lower total PFAS levels, which is interesting. And I just have to say, if widespread people listen to the liver king and start eating a bunch of liver, these levels are definitely gonna go up a lot. Not good. Now we have another risk in particular, which is pathogens. And with raw liver consumption, you're gonna have all the raw meat consumption risks. And just for an example from this study, out of New Jersey, 60% of the chicken liver samples were positive for salmonella, love it. And that's also something found in cow liver as well. And according to the CDC, happens to be the single leading cause of foodborne pathogen death, followed by, you know, Campylobacter and Listeria, which can also be found in raw beef liver. And heck, as The Atlantic covered, raw beef liver consumption was outlawed in Japan in 2012. As a Ministry of Health representative said, that it's a valid preventative measure because the O157 strain of E. coli bacteria was found concentrated in cow livers and consumption of raw meat in general, including beef liver, can cause food poisoning, whether the meat is fresh or not. And we have some interesting data, which has to do with worms. They say, if you eat raw liver, you are at an increased risk of getting roundworm in particular and toxicariosis as a result. How about a uh, 20 foot tapeworm? <laughs> this is a picture of the actual tapeworm. Sorry, it's gross. Uh, taken from somebody in China who is eating raw beef. According to the CDC, we have about 3000 foodborne deaths a year. And I think that number would skyrocket just looking at the amount, you know, raw meat influencers out there. I can't help but thinking of how Sverige nearly died of a Campylobacter infection from eating raw animal parts a few years back. For whatever reason, I got this bacteria called Campylobacter enteritis something. <laughs> People usually don't get this, is that my muscles 
started uh, stopped working. So um, now that I think about it, I probably scared off a lot of people to ever even try it. You know, and he's a younger dude. I don't think we need to see more young people almost die or potentially die from eating raw meat and getting pathogens. Anyway, moving on to how he views the vegan topic. You already know what he would do if his son came out as vegan, but he made a comment that just goes so against everything that I believe, that vegans are on the wrong side of history. And I don't fault her for being a vegan. Now, is she, is she on the wrong side of history? <laughs> well, this is what I believe. Is it the right side of history that decides to kill 70 billion plus innocent land animals a year? Is it the right side of history where animal agriculture is a leading, if not the leading source of greenhouse gas emissions? How about the leading contributor to species extinction likely? Or how about dead zone creation, main contributor to the Gulf of Mexico dead zone? Thankfully, history has been moving toward less exploitation of vulnerable populations in thankfully many cases, yet you wanna to move to more exploitation where people eat more meat, a more carnivorous diet, which would massively increase carbon emissions. Next, he takes a jab at vegan tooth health, which, you know, he makes an anecdotal claim that his wife, who I think is a dentist, saw two groups of people with horrible teeth. And we had two really not favorable patient populations and, uh... What one of them is, uh, it's crystal meth and vegans. <laughs> Let's pretend that it wasn't her own confirmation bias against vegans having cavities and going, you know, check mark, that's a vegan, that's a vegan, that's a vegan. And maybe there were a few more vegans that had bad teeth health. And I would say that, yes, there is a subgroup of vegans, especially a decade back or so, that was eating essentially fruitarian diets. And I know a lot of people that developed cavities during that time are still vegan, eating a more balanced diet and haven't had more tooth problems. You know, you have, as this paper mentions, the acidity of some of these smoothies, as well as the general marketing of fluoride-free toothpaste to vegans and them dodging that as well. That's a topic for another video. But swapping anecdotes, I've gone to vegan events all around the world and I do not see an epidemic of tooth decay anyway. He doesn't mention the positive health effects of a vegan diet, like say 78% lower risk of total diabetes, way, way, way lower risk of high blood pressure, 15% lower total cancer risk, you know, the halting of heart disease progression, and on and on and on. Or to trigger the fragile masculinity, the recent, albeit smaller study that found that the vegan Participants had about twice the total sperm count of their meat-eating counterparts. I just want to make make this clear. If a vegan's kicking ass in life and they don't have any issues, go kick ass in life. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm happy that he's accepting of vegans to a certain degree, even though they're on the wrong side of history. I'm just kind of tired of this idea that every vegan has to be perfect, as if your average meat eater is perfect, or if your average person spending $50 a pop on your weird ground up animal supplements has a perfect life. Like there's more to life than diet. And if a vegan diet is helping you, that is great. But this brings me to just the whole marketing thing going on here. He claims that he's making a hundred million dollars a year from his supplement brand. He's selling stereotypical masculinity for $50 a pop. That's all there is to it. In the end, the main point here is that there are a ton of risks of eating liver and trying to like, work your way up to eat more and more liver. We have the toxin risks from heavy metals and PCBs to PFASs, and we also have the pathogen risk of Campylobacter salmonella. There's reasons countries have outlawed raw meat like that, and, you know, Sverage potentially almost dying of a Campylobacter infection from raw meat. You know, we got the gross worms and all that stuff, and perhaps another main point here is that Eating liver will not make you jacked. All of the people throughout history have been eating liver and onions or not just automatically super ripped. And yeah, I know he points to those other tenants, but liver is the main thing here. Brian calls himself the liver king. So long liver the king, King Brian, who hopefully doesn't end up with a scarred liver or any severe infections. <laughs> and on that note, if you are interested in the Yellowstone trip, the link is below. It's next summer, gotta emphasize that, trying to hop on it because it can be hard to get groups into Yellowstone. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about the liver king and all this stuff. It's quite ridiculous. Anyway, that's it. Feel free to like and subscribe and share and all that good stuff. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.